Hi, in this section on disks and aggregates, we will have a look at managing aggregates. We'll check out containers, what they are, and how to use them. Then we'll have a go at what happens if a disk breaks. We'll look at the importance of spares and how you can reverse the situation after a disk is broken and been replaced. And we will see why we need spares to grow aggregates. At the aggregate level, we will look at changing the max RAID size, which is, as you may remember, the size of the RAID groups in an aggregate. Now let's start with containers. A container is what it says it is. It contains disks. So a disk is always in a container. This is not a restriction of any kind. It simply tells you what the status of a disk in your cluster is. So a disk, for example, may be in an aggregate. Then the container of this disk is aggregate. Or a disk may be broken. Then the disk will be in a container called broken. Disks will automatically change containers when the state of the disk changes. So, for example, if a disk shelf is added to the environment, then initially all of the disks will be unassigned. So the disk will be in the unassigned container. You can view this with disk show container type unassigned. Once you assign a disk, then the disk will be owned by a node and its container type will be spare. Then if you would add a disk to an aggregate, the container type will change again and it will be aggregate. I have listed all possible types and highlighted the ones that are relevant for us now. Disks that are physically connected to a cluster may well be automatically assigned based on the cabling. So how does this work? The command disk option show will tell you whether auto assign is enabled or not. And if it is not enabled, then disks will be unassigned and remain unassigned. Then it is for the administrator to decide to which node the disk will be assigned. After having assigned a disk, you can unassign it by using Remove Owner. We have seen that disks can be unassigned, so unassigning and assigning a disk can be done on the fly. Keep in mind that once a disk is part of an aggregate, you cannot unassign it anymore. Neither can you remove it from the aggregate. I'm going to say this once again. Once a disk is in an aggregate, you cannot take it out again. This is very important. As I said, to view the auto-assign status, you can run Disk Option Show. That will tell you that the auto assign is either on or off. You can change its status by running disk option modify auto assign and then on or off. If you want to know what the defaults are, you can query the manual pages for that. Now disks can break. And if a disk breaks, then the disk will be placed in the broken container. If that happens, a spare disk will automatically kick in and the data will be recalculated from the parity drives and copied to the new disk in the aggregate. So it's very important to have spare disks. You should have a spare disk or two or three for every disk type that you have in your system. Also, the size of the disk is important. If you do not have spare disks of the same size and type, then you may either have a problem because the spare disk may be too small to hold all the data of a broken disk, or if a spare disk is larger than the broken disk, you will waste disk space. A failed disk will automatically be replaced by a spare disk. If you have received and inserted a new disk, then you can assign the disk and replace it, so that the original spare disk will be spare again. There is no real need to do that, but sometimes admins want to have a physical situation back to the way it was when they initially set up their cluster. And after you've replaced the disk, the spare disk will still contain data, and so it's important that you then wipe the disk before you use it again to create an aggregate, for example, or to grow an aggregate. If you don't do that, the disk will be wiped when it's added to an aggregate later on. This wiping may take quite some time. So it can never harm to run a command called disk zero spares because that will find all the spares and wipe them. Some important information before we start. RAID group sizes can be changed, but you can never shrink existing RAID groups. Also, you can never add more disks to a RAID group than the current maximum size. The default minimum and maximum size of RAID groups depend on the type of disk and the RAID type. So for example, for RAID DP with SSDs, the minimum is 5 drives and the maximum is 28 drives. And the default is 24. Mind you, we're talking data aggregates here. To find the current list, you can always visit the hardware universe at hwunetapp.com. Now what happens if you grow the size of a RAID group and then add disks? In this example you see an aggregate of two RAID groups 
with six disks each. Now we change the max RAID size parameter to seven, and that means that both RAID groups will have room for one more drive. Now when we add seven disks, only the last RAID group will be extended. In our case, that's RAID group number one. And the remaining disks will be used to create a new RAID group of six disks. So to equalize the RAID groups, we'll have to add one disk to RAID group zero and one disk to RAID group two. Now let's do that.